Welcome to Quail Valley Golf Club. Located in Vero Beach on the Treasure Coast, Quail Valley is a truly unique design that offers some of the most stunning views of any golf course in Florida. Designed and built by me, Nick Price, and my good friend Tommy Fazio in 2001, we took an old, flat, 404-acre orange grove, moved an amazing 3 million cubic yards of fill, and created an incredible golfing experience with a wide-ranging set of tees for players of all calibers to enjoy. The course features some beautiful lakes that are in play on numerous holes and allowed for some creative contouring of fairways and mounding throughout the course. Join me on a video tour as I take you around one of my favorite places to play here in Florida. The opening hole here at Quail Valley is a medium length par 4 that usually plays with the prevailing wind behind you. An elevated tee shot to a generous fairway that provides the player with a preview of what they can expect to see most of the day. Play the ball in the air or use the contours of the fairway to run the ball onto the green. By going down the left hand side of the fairway, a player is able to shorten up this hole. But this then requires a second shot over a bunker complex that guards the left portion of the green. If players decide to go down the right side of the fairway, this will leave them an unobstructed entry to the green, but with a longer club in. This is the beauty of Quail Valley, as you have options on almost every hole. The second hole can be an intimidating par 3, especially this early in the round. From the back tees, the hole plays approximately 185 yards and has a large horizontal green that has very subtle movement to it, but requires excellent distance control. Despite the large size of the green, you are rewarded for being on the correct side of the many pin positions that are available on this green. With the prevailing wind out of the left, par is always a good score on this hole. The par 5 third hole is a dogleg left with an uphill second or third shot. The left side of the fairway is very well bunkered and as there is a split fairway, your decision off the tee is to either go to the left across the lake or to take the safe route and go down the right side, which makes the hole play a little longer. For the longer player, the decision to go for the green in two requires a well-struck second to a green that is protected by a large bunker on the left side. The ideal position with the second shot would be to the right-hand side of the green, leaving a tricky pitch or chip to one of the more undulating greens on the course. An excellent opportunity for birdie here with a well-played approach shot. The fourth hole happens to be one of my favorites. It has one of the more unique looking tee shots in South Florida as the tee sits approximately 50 feet above the fairway. This tee shot can be very intimidating as a stretch of water on the right encourages a player to favor the left side. However, there is no easy bailout here as there is a gully in the left rough that will catch a tee shot that is too wide. This hole typically plays downwind and a good drive should leave most players with a mid to short iron into the green. This is a green where it is better to be short of the pin leaving an uphill putt on the saddle green which slopes from back to front from the center and then away from the player in the back half. Hole number five is the first in a series of holes that will require you to pay attention to the wind conditions. This hole is one of only two on the property where out of bounds comes into play. With the prevailing wind typically out of the east or players left, the prudent golfer will take their tee shot down the left side of the fairway towards the bunkers which frame this hole perfectly. This will open up the approach shot to the green and make the second shot a lot easier. One of the smaller greens on the course, any shot that finds the middle of this green will never be too far away from the pin. The sixth hole is a par 4 that is one of the few straight holes on the course, and this is the second and last hole on the golf course where out of bounds could possibly come into play. With a typical left to right wind, the preferred play off the tee is to favor the left side where a well-struck tee shot will leave most players with a mid to short iron into a green that is pretty generous. A good birdie opportunity and a definite breather hole as the next three holes coming up are a strong finish to the front nine. Number seven is a par five that heads back to the north. It has one of the best views from the fairway looking back toward the clubhouse and is a favorite for many of our members here at Quail Valley. There is a generous landing area off the tee and the hole slowly narrows as you get closer to the green. And for the longer hitter, a decision will be made with the second shot, as again, there are options. Down the right-hand side as you approach the green, there is a speed slot 
it will help the ball funnel its way down onto the green. This is the safest play as any shot down the left or pitching a little deep into the green may run the risk of releasing into the water that protects both the left and the rear of the green. Pin placement should determine which way you decide to play your approach and if you do lay up, make sure you leave yourself a comfortable yardage in. Once on the green, the views of the lake and the hole surrounding it are truly picture perfect. The par 3 8th hole has frequently proven to be the most difficult in tournament play over the years. A precisely hit iron shot is required into this green, and with the wind typically coming off the water and out of the east, the golfer's right, it will challenge the most accomplished golfer to execute this shot. The toughest pin placements are down on the right side of the green and at the back centre. The smart play on this hole is to ignore the hole location and aim for the front left of the green where there is a high spot that will help the ball turn and feed into the middle of the green. However, if the tee shot is pulled, there is a bunker lurking to the left side that once in leaves a very tricky shot to a green sloping away from the player. Any player should be happy to have a putt for birdie on this demanding hole, and three here is always a good score. Another one of my favorites is the ninth hole, one of the few holes on the golf course that does require a forced carry onto the green. This hole typically provides a challenge for golfers of all skill levels and from a visual standpoint really shows how dramatic some of the elevation changes at Quail can be. A slightly uphill tee shot that must be placed to the right side of the fairway or be far enough up so as to get an unobstructed view of the green. The left side of the fairway is not only protected by two bunkers but also a large mound that will leave a blind shot to one of the smaller greens on the course. Care should be taken with a second shot here as it also plays slightly uphill and taking enough club is very important as the green features a false front that must be carried in order to finish on the putting surface. Another tricky green where it's always best to have an uphill putt. Nowhere else in the world will you find a man-made island par 5 like the 10th hole. This unique and visually stunning hole can be also intimidating but it is a wonderful design that gives players many options. The ultimate in risk reward where length off the tee is not a must, but placement is, as the closer the ball is to the right hand side of the fairway, the shorter the second shot in. However, if the player decides to go for the green in two, it is all carry over water, and a slightly mishit shot is certain to end up in a watery grave. Most players will opt for keeping the ball down the middle to left half of the fairway, and then carefully place in their second shots to avoid two bunkers in the layup area. A short iron to a green that slopes away from the player is all that's left, but excellent distance control is needed to get the ball close. This hole is all about strategy and temptation. A wonderful par 5 and start to the back 9, as the hole can reward the risk with an equal opportunity. The 11th hole is one of the most underrated holes on the golf course. A fairly straight, medium length par 4 that has staggered fairway bunkers both left and right. Wind direction is always a factor here, as invariably it is across the hole, making the drive a little tougher than it appears. The fairway is pinched in from the left in the landing area, and although there is room on the right, it does make the angle of the second shot much harder. A terrific green that can be difficult to hit as it angles away from the player at 45 degrees from right to left. Though the most intimidating hole location is on the far left, the hole location requiring the most precise shot is located on the right hand side of the green as it is only 15 yards deep. Miss this green on the wrong side and you'll have a tough time getting the ball up and down, but a well played short iron makes for an excellent birdie chance. Hole number 12 is a simply stunning par 3. The Rodan green on this hole is again angled from right to left and runs nearly 40 yards from front to back. It plays slightly uphill and a little longer than the yard it shows as it is normally into the prevailing wind. Club selection is key here as getting to the correct level is important and by doing so will give a player a great opportunity to make birdie. The 13th is a dogleg left par 4 with an elevated fairway that makes the hole play a little longer than the yardage. There are two large bunkers protecting the left side of the fairway with the speed slot close to the bunkers which rewards the more aggressive line off the tee. This will give the player a shorter line into a green that slopes from right to left and also help a well struck shot feed into the middle of the green. A beautiful second shot hole with this length style green that is pocketed in a low area and framed by trees. But 
A player needs to be aware that this green is also subtly fast for what appears to be a simple, flat design. The par 5 14th hole might provide the last gettable birdie opportunity on the course. Although the tee shot appears to be straightforward, there is an angled ridge that runs diagonally across the fairway and the landing area that will move the ball significantly to the right. The closer you can play down the right side off this tee, the better chance you'll have of catching another speed slot, giving more roll and a shorter approach to the green. The small, well-guarded green sits out on a beautiful peninsula with a narrow entrance and any shot to the middle of this green will never be far from the hole. As we come to the 15th tee, we now start the homeward stretch of four very good golf holes that will test the ability of any golfer. Probably the most well-bunkered hole on the course, the 15th is one of the toughest par fours here at Quail. With an elevation change of approximately 40 feet from tee to green, and normally playing again into the prevailing wind, it requires two very well-struck shots to find the putting surface. The green slopes from left to right with a narrow entrance that makes for a demanding second, as finishing above this hole can leave you with one of the fastest putts on the golf course. Getting the ball close on this hole is a shot you will surely remember. The tee on the 16th hole sits nearly 60 feet above sea level and is the highest point at Quail Valley. All downhill and normally with the prevailing wind at your back, the 16th is the longest par 3 on the course but plays much shorter than its actual yardage. It is void of bunkers and the approach allows a player to chase the ball onto a green that slopes from right to left. Always wise to pay attention to the wind direction on this hole as any shot that lands too deep on the green has a very good chance of ending up in the water either to the left or over the green. Missing to the right off the tee is also to be avoided as one is then faced with a very challenging chip over several humps and bumps that protect the right side of the green. Another one of my favorites, the 17th hole is a beautiful par four that gently dog legs to the left around the lake. Like many of the holes on the back nine, it plays considerably longer than its actual yardage mainly because of being into the prevailing wind. The drive for most players will be across a portion of the water to a generous fairway, and playing down the left side of the fairway brings more water into play, but when well executed, leaves the player with a much shorter club into the green. The front left and rear of the green are guarded by four bunkers, and there is a slope to the right which will help the ball turn onto the green. Another hole where club selection is very important, as being past the pin, will leave a player with one of the fastest putts on the course. A wonderful par four that rewards both skill and strategy. And finally, we get to 18, the last hole of the day. A sweeping uphill dog leg to the left with an elevation change of approximately 40 feet from tee to green. This hole is framed by 11 bunkers and has the magnificent clubhouse as a backdrop behind the green. You might be hard pressed to find a more challenging finishing hole anywhere and to many of the members, it is the toughest hole in the course by far. It plays almost 500 yards from the back tees with ample fairway to the right. However, the ideal drive here will find you slightly left of center. Once in the fairway, you are now faced with quite possibly the toughest and most demanding approach shot you have seen all day. An uphill shot to a small two-tiered green where the back portion is half the size of the front. You may hit as much as two extra clubs than the yardage indicates, and finding this green in two is always an achievement. Like most great finishing holes in golf, making a par here will always make lunch or that after-round cocktail tastes so much better.